Susan Calman. <laughs> and cruise ships are my happy place. <gasps> That's the tail. <laughs> so I've packed my passport and my suitcase and we're off on a whole new set of adventures. Feels slightly like walking on the moon. Just you, oh. me, I'm a lone wolf. And loads and loads of new cruise ship friends. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> this time we're really pushing the boat out. <laughs> it's like Game of Thrones or something. Crossing continents. Never thought my life would come to Mexico. Crossing time zones. And crossing some truly unforgettable destinations off my bucket list. Absolutely love this. So step on board <laughs> and let's go cruising. <laughs> I wonder if I could swim back to Glasgow. This time I'm getting a slice of paradise in French Polynesia. It feels wonderful. On an epic cruise ship complete with sails. Is it more exciting? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Where I get closer to nature than ever before. <laughs> Discover the hidden gems of the South Pacific. It's extraordinary to watch. Yes. Yeah. And face one of my biggest fears. <laughs> Stop naming how many sharks there are! <laughs> this is the start of my greatest adventure yet. It's going to take two days, three planes and over 9,000 miles. And that's all before I meet my cruise ship. But I promise, it'll be worth it. Longest flight I've ever been on. So I've bought not one magazine, I've got three. Uh, no one pack of Suki Sweets, I've got two packs of Suki Sweets. And uh, I've just got to get going. It's very exciting, because I'm prepared. Suki Sweets packed, I've checked in and dropped off my suitcase. Ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder that we have cleared US Immigration and Customs here in Dublin. You will arrive into Los Angeles as a domestic passenger. So let's get on with my mega journey. Goodbye! Three hours in and even the cameraman's having a snooze, so I'll film this bit myself. There seems to have been a collective decision on the plane to put all the blinds down and go for a nap. It's like a giant pyjama party in the sky. After a stop-off in LA and another eight-hour flight... <laughs> Finally here, the island of Tahiti. Over 9,000 miles from the UK, it's part of French Polynesia. A collection of over 115 islands and atolls in the South Pacific spread across a whopping 1.9 million square miles, making it almost as big as Europe. And while tourism is a major part of the economy, so is the conservation effort to protect the local ecosystems. And it's difficult not to describe this place as paradise. My starting point is the largest island in the collective, Tahiti. Almost 200,000 people call it home, with a similar number of tourists visiting every year. And I can see why. So I've made it to the beautiful island of Tahiti, and it's just as gorgeous as I'd hoped for. Boiling hot as well. I've had a long journey, though, so I think I'll take things at a bit of a leisurely pace. And after a rest, my French Polynesian fantasy gets underway from Tahiti, then heads east to the remote coral atolls of Fakarava. And Rangaroa, part of the Tomotu Archipelago, will then sail west to the Society Islands of Taha'a, Bora Bora, followed by Wahini and Murea, before returning to Tahiti. But first, time to meet my ship. There she is. Quite different to anything I've been on before, but she screams adventure for me. And do you know what I'm up for? Adventure. Let's get going. My home for the next 10 days is Wind Spirit. At only 134 metres in length, she's small but perfectly formed. And she's also a four-masted sailing yacht complete with six sails, meaning she's more eco-friendly, so doesn't have to rely on engines as much as your regular cruise ship. Do you know, this is almost my favourite part of cruising, just before you get on the ship. It's like being given a present, but you have no idea what's inside. So let's see. 
Under the gift wrap, this vessel has just 73 staterooms and four guest decks, which means there's less chance of me getting lost. I love this, walking down the corridor. It's kind of art deco -y. It's classy. That's what it is. It's tactile. Thank goodness no one else is in the corridor. It's tactile. <laughs> just get in the cabin. Right, here we go. <gasps> Into the cabin. The my eyes immediately drawn to these beautiful portholes. And I can just imagine lying in that lovely bed in the morning as the sun rises through my portholes like a proper sailor. Oh, right. So, it's a compact cabin, and what I'm interested in is storage. Storage under here, double wardrobe, plenty of room in there, and of course, my favourite form of storage, which is one that people often forget about, is under here. I think you're meant to put your suitcase under here, but I fit just fine. I might need a minute to get out, though. Hello. So I've done a bit of a change because it's the sail away party and, you know, it's the first time you're really meeting the other guests so I thought I'd make a bit of an effort to put on a, a fancier top. Sail away is always exciting and when you're surrounded by stunning South Pacific scenery you know your fellow passengers will be up on the top deck with you so it's a great chance to make friends like Jackie, Eddie, Debbie and Ron here. Now, this is my first time in this part of the world. Oh, wow. Have you been here before? Yes. Yeah. Actually, this, this was our very first cruise. Ten, ten years ago. Ten years, ten years ago. ago. And we loved it so much, we came back again. It's our 10th anniversary. Friend anniversary. Friend anniversary. Show her what you got the first trip. <gasps> oh, yeah. You got a tattoo? Here. <laughs> you got a tattoo? We're all in, man. <laughs> Do you see my yeah. tattoo? It says, I love Grimsby. Oh. oh. No. You have the same one. <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping you had, I love Fakarava. <laughs> Can I be honest? You're my best friends on the cruise. <laughs> right? We all get matching tattoos. You stay out there. Yeah. So we're getting, uh, wait, so we're getting matching right tattoos. And some gorgeous views. I'm quite the poet. And it's difficult not to be when you're in this beautiful part of the world. And if that wasn't impressive enough, after we set sail, the ship also sets its sails in a majestic display. The slow unfurling is mesmerizing. And it's an unforgettable start to my epic voyage. Coming up, on the ship's bridge, I get hands on. Do you want to push the button? <laughs> and get a pep talk from my fellow passengers. Sharks only attack from below. I mean, how does that help me, Alison? <laughs> Welcome back to my cruise around French Polynesia. Having travelled halfway round the world to meet my ship, a four-masted sailing yacht, I left Tahiti last night. Today is a sea day, as we travel some 250 nautical miles to Fakarava, followed by Rangaroa, then we're off to the society islands of Taha, Bora Bora, Uwahini and Murea, before returning to Tahiti. We've got a day at sea, which is brilliant, because it gives you the opportunity to really explore the place, see what it's got to offer. Um, I'm going to indulge in my favourite thing in the world. When you walk past someone on the ship and you go, morning, and they go, morning. So I'm going to go and say morning to people and explore the ship. Let's do it. With a bar, restaurant and the all-important hot tub, this ship has all the usual cruise staples, but feels more like a yacht. And it's home to just 148 passengers. Morning. morning! See? Morning! Bet I've said hello to most of them by lunch. Morning! It feels like, like I'm forcing people to say hello to me. So, middle of the ship is reception. It's kind of like an information hub, if you will. Um, I've seen lots and lots of people already on the ship with this. And it's a fish card. Uh, which tells you about all of the kind of local fish. The local fish? What an odd way of putting it, Susan. The local fish. <laughs> the local fish might meet. 
and no cruise is complete without onboard activities. A great way to meet fellow travellers. Sign in sheets for something. <laughs> a couple's massage workshop. <laughs> I don't know how appropriate it would be to approach some other passengers and ask if they wanted to do a couple's massage workshop with me. I am tempted, but I feel that might be a step too far. But I'll pop my name down just in case. Morning, everyone. Morning. Up on deck. Sun is shining. It's beautiful. You can grab a sun lounger, have a wee drink, have a cocktail. Morning. How are you? Good, nice you. to see you. Nice to see you. And it just carries on this way to one of my favourite spots at the front of the ship. What is so different, I think, about any other cruise I've been on? The sail is up. There are no other ships. It is just us in the middle of the ocean. It's the furthest away from home I've ever been. And it feels wonderful. And just behind me is the ship's bridge, which is also pretty unusual. So one of the cool things about this ship is it has an open bridge policy. So whenever it says open bridge, you literally can pop onto the bridge. So that's what I'm going to do. And the man at the helm today is Second Officer Brian. This feels a bit wrong. Is it OK if I come in? Oh, yeah, sure, is come it, on in. Are you sure? Yeah, sure, sure, come on in, come on in. It's open Brian. bridge. Brian. Hello. I'm Susan. Nice to meet you, Susan. Nice meet you. I noticed a twang in your accent. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Wales. Yeah. I love it. How did you end up doing this kind of thing? Have you always done it? Uh, well, no, actually, as all good stories start, I started in the bars. Uh, really? Yes, and then I met the officers and they taught me about the, the training programme. So I went as a cadet, I trained as an officer and now I'm driving. I love the open bridge policy. I mean, genuinely, if it says open bridge, passengers can just come up and say hello, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We, we like to have the open bridge. It's a nice thing that uh, you don't find on many of the other ships. So this ship is really interesting for me because you've got the sails. Is it more exciting? Oh, absolutely. Think? Yeah. Yes. This looks like it's from a Bond movie or something. <laughs> what does this do? This is what we do we physically move the sails. Do you want to push the button? I don't want to push the button! Right. <laughs> I, want to push the button. I think we should do it together. OK. So, so we're going to do this one, we're going to move it that way, OK? So that way? So, yeah, Clockwise? That way. OK, yeah. right. So one... Put your hand on top of mine, Brian. OK. Magnificent. And I feel like the Demi Moore of the high seas, which has got me thinking about that sign-up sheet. Do you ever think about having a couple's massage, Brian? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not looking for a friend. That is so lovely. Thank you so much, Brian. Not sure Brian was up for the couple's massage, so I'll continue my search. On some ships, you occasionally get freebies, from flowers to a glass of bubbly. But when in paradise, you get offered something altogether more exciting. On this cruise, you get a complimentary snorkel, mask and flippers for the duration of your stay. Because the waters of French Polynesia cover a staggering 1.9 million square miles, they're fit to burst with sea life. But I'm a bit nervous about it all because I've only ever snorkelled off the coast of Devon. Luckily, the crew are on hand to help kit me out. Hi! Hello! How are you? Good, how are you? How are you? Good. I'm good, thank you. Now, I'm here mm -hmm. to get some snorkelling gear. Yeah, sure, Can absolutely. you help me? Why not? Yeah. What is your so size? Uh, I yeah. say I'm a size four, but I'm actually a size three. Oh, OK. So, small. All right, we have it, no problem. Yes? Yeah. So, the fins, we call it fins. Fins? Yeah. Okay, right. okay, all right. Can I take that? Yes. Can I take that? No okay. problem. No. Okay, so right. should they be snug? Yeah, so. Come. I feel like Cinderella. Or should that be Finderella? The skip. And also the mask. Oh. Mask. Can I just. Sure. Uh -huh. Right? Snorkel fitting done, I'm ready for my Little Mermaid fantasy on my first excursion tomorrow. I have been up for hours because I'm so excited. This is our first destination, Fakarava, and it looks 
just beautiful already. I've never been anywhere like this in the world before, and this is like my first sight of the beautiful islands. I just can't wait, I really can't. This is Fakarava, an atoll of French Polynesia. Atolls are rings of coral reefs or islands surrounding a lagoon. It's an impressive 429 square miles and is a UNESCO biosphere, a conservation status that recognises the local government and people have gone to great lengths to keep its undisturbed coral reef protected from things, including excess tourism. Responsible snorkelling is welcomed, although floating in what looks like the middle of the sea is a bit nerve-wracking. And for this excursion, arranged via the ship, our guide Marion has some pointers for me and my new snorkelling friends about how we can protect the area. Uh, because it's shallow, be careful, don't stand up on the reef, please don't touch anything. And uh, you see that the life is coming around you, some sharks, don't be scared. Okay. <laughs> White tip shark, <laughs> black tip shark, brown shark. Okay, we stay close. Stop naming <laughs> sharks! Stop naming how many sharks there are! We stay all together. Okay. Okay. Snorkeling in a lagoon was scary enough, but sharks? Good luck, Calman. However, this cruise is all about challenging myself, so I won't back out now. We're only a short boat ride away, just enough time to get to know my fellow cruisers, Alison and David. Why are you on the cruise? Is there a special reason? We're 20 years married. And Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a big birthday. Well, I just had a big birthday. Uh -huh. So a big 6 0. 40? Mm, I wish. Mm. A big 6 0. You're not 60. I am. Oh. <laughs> you look no. amazing. Thank you, darling. That's really lovely. Just, you, know, you laugh a lot. It's my 50th next year. Oh, lovely. Oh, shut up, Susan. You don't. Thanks, Alison. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's commonplace to just return the compliment. <laughs> But fortunately for Alison, my mind is on other things. There was a mention, David, of sharks. How do you feel about that? Quite excited, actually. Yeah. yeah. Sharks only attack from below. OK? So... <laughs> I mean, how does that help me, Alison? Avoiding sharks isn't the only thing to think about, as this area is protected, as tourists have certain responsibilities when we visit. Before you arrive on the cruise, you get some information about things like we're about to do. And one of the things that's really important because of the coral reefs is to wear the proper suntan lotion. It's special stuff which is coral reef friendly. It's not difficult to get hold of. So that when you go into the water, you are leaving it the way it was when you got in. I'm a little bit nervous, but you can see how shallow it is. I'm just going to give it a go. Right then, Calman, time to live your life to the fullest, even if you're about to be nibbled by a shark. It's amazing! It's the coral garden, it's amazing! Floating in the middle of this pristine lagoon, I can see why the people of Fakarava want to preserve this place. Just underneath. It's a coral and the most beautiful fishes I have ever seen. From butterfly fish to angel fish, the lagoon is packed with ocean life. This is breathtaking. I'd almost forgotten about the sharks. But just when I thought it was safe to stay in the water, a black tipped shark is spotted. This is the closest I've ever been to a shark. And I think I loved it. There was a shark and it was <laughs> quite amazing having had this phobia of sharks my entire life to be as close as I am to the camera of a shark that just swam past because it wasn't bothered. It wasn't bothered. One of the things you do when you're snorkeling, you just, you just kind of lie there and enjoy it and it was Absolutely incredible. Having surprised myself with sharks, we head back towards the ship, but the surprises keep coming. Oh, look! Oh, look at them! Look, there, there, they're right there! Oh my god, look at them! They're right next to us! 
No! Look at here! Have you ever seen anything like it? Have you ever seen anything like it? Oh, look! Oh, look! Oh, right there! They're right there! I seem like quite a confident person, and only a few of my closest friends know how frightened I am of things. And as I was in the ocean, floating with the current, with a shark feet away from me, <clears throat> I genuinely felt the fear leaving me, and it was wonderful. And this cruise for me isn't about ticking boxes, about excursions. It is genuinely life-changing. Time to head back to the ship for a quick freshen up. And as we sail away from Fab Fakarava, I know a nice secluded place to reflect on my life-changing trip so far. Somebody in my favourite spot. What is going on? Hello, ladies. Hello. You're in my favourite spot. What's going on here? Oh. So would you like it back? <laughs> <laughs> I would like it back. First of all, I'm Susan. What's your name? Barbie. Barbie? Penny. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to What's the relationship? Sisters. Sisters. <laughs> it's in a sinister fashion. Do your sisters, do you cruise a lot together? Our mom started us. Our mom always liked to cruise. So she's gone now, uh -huh. but we've continued. We Have you done this kind of part of the world before? Is it yes, your first yeah. time? No, it's her favorite. We've been here. Just the places it goes, especially this ship, because it, it goes to the little places yeah, yeah. and there's not 6,000 people on it. I think it makes the trip more enjoyable. But you can always find somewhere to go on your own. That's why I come to Th That's yeah. why we're coming. We're staying yes, in your spot. spot. <laughs> When in heaven on earth, I don't mind sharing, really. Besides, there's always a new favourite spot to be found. Back in the day, there was one explorer who happened upon a group of islands and called them the Disappointment Islands. I don't know what kind of day he was having, cos I find this place most excellent. Coming up, I try before I buy with the ship's chef. That's very sweet. It's delicious. And challenge myself by going for a swim in the middle of the ocean. A bit frightening to jump off the back of your cruise ship. Welcome back to my French Polynesian adventure aboard a cruise ship with a difference. This one's a luxury yacht. We travelled overnight and have arrived at our next stop, Rangaroa. And every good cruise day starts with breakfast. What I've done today, because essentially I'm a, an eight-year-old child, is I've made a little smiley face out of my cold breakfast. I've got the salmon, I've got peaches, I've got cream cheese, I've got cucumber, five slices, so I get my five a day, start of the day. And I appear to have added five capers as well for some unknown reason. You'll see this on cruise ships. Boofy madness hits people. They come back with a plate full of contradictory foods, yet somehow on a cruise it's acceptable. So I'm going to dig in. That's really nice. They can put that on the package. Susan Kalman, <laughs> Glasgow. But we're a long way from Glasgow now. This is the largest atoll in French Polynesia and the second largest in the world. The lagoon is a vast 550 square miles. The whole of Glasgow would fit into it more than eight times. In fact, the name, Rangaroa, means endless sky and it even has its own horizon. I'm heading on an excursion inland with some fellow cruisers in search of a local legend. Hello everyone, are you my tour group today? Yes. Yeah. Hello everybody, shall we get on the bus? And... Let's get going. Because the waters of French Polynesia are brimming with the black-lipped oyster, which produces the rare and valuable black pearl, they've become so associated with this region, they're known as Tahitian pearls. After a 15-minute bus ride, we're here, the Gauguin Pearl Farm where they've been responsibly farming black pearls to protect the environment for over 30 years. And we're about to find out exactly what goes into farming them from local expert Philippe. But first, it's the important questions. 
Where, where is the where pearl? pearl? That's the best yeah. <laughs> But it's like, show me the money. Where's the pearl? Where is the pearl? Uh -huh. Here. Yeah, I see it. Oh! Yeah. oh. In the wild, pearls are formed when an irritant enters an oyster or mussel. The oyster then protects itself by producing necra or mother of pearl to cover the intruder. But at a farm, they introduce a small bead to start the process. Do the people who do that have to train for a long time? It must be quite a delicate job. You have to try to grow the pearl in the center of the pocket. So we need uh, many, many shells. Mm -hmm. I will say 50,000 to 100,000 before a technician can say, I am a technician. It's an incredibly delicate process that requires patience, focus and a very steady hand. And how long does it take, generally, from the seeding to the time you harvest it for the pearls? How long does that take? 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. Oh, you see the pearl? Yes. Huh? yes OK, yes. I take it out. Oh. Oh. A pearl of about a centimetre in diameter like this one would fetch about $150. And here, pearl surgeon and master technician Mathieu is hard at work. Normally it's about 30 seconds to see the shell. You will see 30, 300 shells per day. The local government even set up a school on the island teaching would-be technicians how to effectively and ethically seed and harvest pearls. We always keep the shell. Right, okay. Trying to keep the shell alive. So we try to, oh, to take out wow. the pearl. Yes, good oh. one. Uh -huh. And then we can put a new bead to make a new pearl. Okay. okay. It's like when you give birth, you need a rest before you do it again. Yeah. <laughs> As I understand it. I don't know myself. C'est difficile? Pour avoir quelques années de métier, mais ça va, c'est un métier assez difficile quand même. Take out the pearl. Look at that one! Smaller than the other one. This one is 9 mm. Yeah. How cool is that? It's extraordinary to watch. Yeah. I've got a steady hand, so maybe I'll enrol at Pearl School next year. That was utterly fascinating. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I have such an appreciation now for those little pearls I've seen in the gift shops, at the airport and on the ship, and what it takes to make them happen. Oh, it's just been wonderful to see. Oh, I've loved it. Right back to the ship. Like most cruise ships, this one has onboard entertainments like music performances and cocktail demos. But there's a surprising feature at the very stern of the ship, which I'm reliably informed I'll need a swimming costume for. So one of the unique things about this boat, which is incredibly exciting, is they've got a water platform at the back of it. And what that means is you can basically get off it and do some kayaking or paddle boarding or swimming. And it is a boiling hot day, so I've decided to get in there, see what it's like to swim off the back of a boat. Whenever the ship is anchored offshore, guests can take the plunge into the crystal clear 27 degree waters. While most people are getting ready for sail away, I'm dipping my toes in the water and continuing to live life on the edge. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. I'm swimming off the back of a boat. It's, 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 look, look. Thanks very much for giving me my new doll. Oh my goodness. Hold on. The temperature is like the most beautiful bath. Not too hot, not too cold. The water is calm as anything. And again, a bit frightening to jump off the back of your cruise ship, but it's allowed and it is absolutely amazing. <laughs> On this ship, the swimming pool is this. If you look over there, there's nothing. <laughs> I'm really loving this. This cruise really gives you the opportunity to get in the water in so many different ways, whether it's an excursion or just off the back of the ship. I've... Uh, 
I have no idea how relaxing it would be. If I don't get back on the ship soon, I might have to, because we're due to set sail for our next destination. The sun is setting in the South Pacific. Just a paradise. But in typical fashion, whenever someone mentions the weather, a massive storm rolls in and wind speeds pick up, so our ship is forced to change course. Even in paradise, you can get a bit of weather. And we're currently having a bit of weather. So the ship's turning back to Papietti, which is absolutely fine with me, means there's more time for spontaneous fun. So to avoid the storm, we're popping back to Tahiti and then weather permitting, we'll head on to the society islands of Bora Bora and Muria. The next morning, back in Tahiti. Hi, Chef. Hi, Susan. Lovely to meet you, my darling. Nice to meet you. With plans changing, the ship's chef, Danilo, needs to pick up extra supplies for the kitchen from Papietti's market. And luckily, he's letting me tag along. You got the money? I'll keep hold of that for you. I'm just joking. I'm just... <laughs> this bustling market is a huge 7,000 square metres and has two floors, so there's plenty to choose from. Can we taste this uh, papaya? papaya. It, it's never a, tasted papaya. This is the sweetest papaya you can ever have. And it's local? It's local. Yeah. This can is I where it helps following chef round. The chef knows everybody. And we're going to try it. Look. Oh, my goodness. This Susan, is for me. Yeah. Do I? Try it. It's really sweet. That's very sweet. It's delicious. Sweet. And because this cruise feels so exclusive and intimate, it's lovely to see that Chef Danilo just pops to the local market himself to pick up supplies. So, Mama, I'm going to take your papaya, like 40 kilos. Watermelon, 10 kilos. 10 yeah? kilos. And then the banana, I'll take like uh, 10 kilos. Come back and get it later on? Yeah. Tonight, Chef is going to prepare us a speciality dish using local ingredients. And for that, he's going to need a not so little fishy. This is the yellow fin tuna. Wow, it's huge. And this is the wahoo. Uh huh. The pusun crew, which right. is the national dish of French Polynesia. And you Polynesia. make it with the tuna? Yes, we'll make Lovely. it with the tuna. So what are you, how much are you going to take back to the ship? Do well, uh, I normally buy like 40 kilos right, okay. of the yellow fin uh -huh. and 30 kilos of the wahoo. Wow. Roughly around $700. <laughs> you are eating too much, Susan, so I have to buy more. All right? There we go. I'm so sorry, Chef. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll stop having the pussy. The chef's team will pick up all these tasty local ingredients once they're packed and ready. Back on board, Chef Danilo heads to the kitchen and I go for a quick change. Before joining a new group of friends for dinner out on the deck. Oh, you're holding hands. Oh, you guys. Oh, wow. Good evening. Yes. And we're lucky enough that we're being hosted by one of the crew members. It's lovely to see you all for dinner. Now, Claire, you, you are, of course, an important member of the crew, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm the hotel general manager. You're having, you often have dinner with guests. Every cruise, uh, once or twice a cruise, depending on the length of the cruise, we'll invite our, our guests to dinner. It's quite a small yeah. cruise, so as passengers, we know who the crew That's are. That's the best yeah. thing about it. It's yeah. like we get to know each other. And to tell us about the specials tonight, my new friend and shopping buddy, Chef Danilo. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. The yellow fin tuna. This is featured tonight mm -hmm. as our fish of the day. Uh -huh. Cannot wait to try it. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner, everyone. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see. Yeah. We'll Thanks. see. I can't wait to try the national dish after I've tucked into a shrimp starter, of course. Oh, beautiful! It is absolutely delicious. Sitting out on deck, it feels like we've been friends forever. And 9,000 miles from home, some conversations are universal. 
So you know Len Goodman, right? Dancing mm -hmm. with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He was my dance teacher. Oh wow! Shut up! Oh, yes. No. Are you street to... dancer? Yeah. <laughs> I am always looking for someone to dance with. Oh, I've been in the lounge dancing every night. Now it's time to taste the fruits and fish of my labour. So um, if you've got the tuna, please enjoy it, because I went to the market with the chef, Danilo, to get this tuna. Wow. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Chef has done the tuna proud. Oh, my has God, it? yeah. If I could, to new friends, so cheers to everyone. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 Delicious. Coming up, I have a whale of a time in Bora Bora. Wow, that was amazing. And get a real taste for Lagoon Life. Probably the best drink I've ever had. Welcome back to my epic cruise around the islands of French Polynesia. We've travelled 150 nautical miles northwest from Tahiti to one of the most famous islands in this extraordinary part of the world. It's quite early in the morning. I've just run up on to the deck as we're arriving in Bora Bora. It looks so different from anywhere we've been. It's like riding a roller coaster into paradise. Oh, love it. With its striking dormant volcano, a beach considered one of the best in the world and bungalows that stand over the water, it's no wonder this place is famous as the ultimate luxury island getaway. And as I've discovered a whole new love for the lagoons and sea life of French Polynesia, I've put myself on an excursion with some fellow passengers, led by our guide, Damien. We're seeing the lagoon by speedboat because it's small enough to pass over the coral reefs without damaging them and less likely to collide with any of the local wildlife. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! We might get a little bit splashed! A little bit. Now, when I mentioned I had a newfound love of water, I'm not sure this is what I meant. I mean, essentially, someone's just put a hose on me. I'm sorry. So you got the wave? No, I didn't uh... notice anything. <laughs> but now I'm noticing everything. The striking landscape and the shimmering waters look almost untouched thanks to the conservation efforts of those who live here. We don't need a lot of tourists. But boy, in a normal year, it's 100,000 tourists a year. They limit the size of the hotels, and even the cruises are now limited to a little more than 1,000 passengers. We don't get the big ship anymore. Which means we get front row seats to spectacular scenery. Let's see what we find. That was incredible. I'm quite glad I've snorkeled a couple of times and I had the confidence because there was a bit of a current. So at times you just had to float over without, I hardly use my legs at all. But the payoff, I've never seen so many fish so close to me in my entire life. It was like Spaghetti Junction. There were just fish all over swimming around. Incredible. But those fish were just the beginning. So just in the water in front of us yeah, is an eagle ray flapping. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's gone, it's speeding away. It's called an eagle ray, but it should be an underwater bat. Right. Right. A bat ray. I shouldn't rename things, should I? What I find so wonderful about this 
is that you can't plan to see these things. You just have to hope they happen. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe we are very lucky. When I see boats waiting like this, it's possible there is a humpback whale. Yes, there are a whale, a whale here. Wow! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wow, that was amazing! Uh... According to Damien, as part of the effort to preserve the ecosystem, we can't disturb the whale in its natural habitat now we know it's here, especially as it has a calf. So we've taken a slight detour to our final stop. Good stand up. It's very odd because you're just standing up on a sandbank in the middle of this massive lagoon. I mean, I still need to swim a bit. I'm not that tall, but it's beautiful. And Damien has combined my favorite things. You like pomelo? These gorgeous warm waters, food, and a cheeky beverage. I'm having Tahitian rum in the middle of a beautiful lagoon in Bora Bora. The rum's good. Manuya, Manuya. Probably the best drink I've ever had. I can just keep walking, you know. That was the perfect end to the perfect day. My French Polynesian trip is not over yet, and tonight we're celebrating the halfway point with a barbecue where I can let my hair down with my fellow passengers. It's delicious, lovely. isn't it? I don't know why I'm sitting with I'm ruining a couple's romantic evening. <laughs> no, you're not. You never know who you're going to meet on these cruises. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know what you're going to end up doing. As the party gets underway, a classic cruise tradition emerges. All right, um, we are ready for our land dancing. Everybody's welcome to join us. Let's dance together. Time. I continue my adventure in French Polynesia. Would I get taught to stick my oar in? So absolutely special. Channel my inner beauty queen. Miss Bora Bora. And party. Turn around. On a private island. And you can see that next Friday at 8. Neil Morrissey discovers some things are best left buried as he stars in Channel 5 original drama Finders Keepers starting Wednesday at 9. Having a ball with drag queens and jet skis, Jane McDonald explores a different side of Grand Canaria as her Canary Islands tour continues new next. <laughs>